but before we do that, let me just toss across to my colleague Ashwarya. She has with her another women achiever. Uh, Ashwarya, tell us the story. I have with me Ajayta Shah, who's the founder of Frontier Markets, that's going to the hinterland and empowering women there. And how she's doing it, that's exactly what we are here to find out today. Ajayta, uh, you know, uh, you're running a huge network of women that's primarily the huge network of e-commerce, uh, you know, supply chain, and uh, it's primarily being run by women. Tell me, um, how has the journey been for you? Like, was it tough to start the business? Were there some hiccups that you've encountered? Take us through that. So, Ashwari, as you know, um, first of all, hi, everyone. Um, it's... Uh, it's been 20 years, and in a 20-year journey, I would say that we've gone from being a energy access company to a gender company to a tech company to now a women powerful platform. And um, it's been the most incredible journey because the biggest thing that we've learned in our journey is that A, Rural markets in India are the biggest story in the future of life. 800 million people living in this country that have lack of access to services. And if you actually meet those demands, it's a big market, but it's also a big impact. Second is that women are ultimately at the center of all of this um, because they really are the ones that are craving to earn income, craving to influence and craving to leverage their assets with this trust which is amazing to see on the ground. And then the third is, bring it all together on tech, everything changes because all of a sudden you become a commercial technology platform company that enables the future for the entire value chain. Um, today, 20,000 women entrepreneurs, uh, a million families, uh, 100 million solutions in ag tech, fintech, health tech, digital payments, you name it. Um, has been an incredible journey for us to understand that if you have the vision of investing in women and understanding the power of women and just understanding the barriers to help them be more empowered and you bring the right solutions in, everything changes. You know, one of the key things that I wanted to understand from you is that when you go uh, to the rural areas, when you're talking to these women, how do you uh, assure them uh, to come on board? How do you ensure that, you know, uh, what is the process that goes behind bringing them on board to your platform and making them financially very empowered? So one thing I'm always really, and again, thank you, Bharat, India and government, is that like in India today, we have an amazing infrastructure. We have this infrastructure of self-help groups with this infrastructure of NGOs and community that has actually helped 80 million women be seen on a system. And so for me, to access those women means partnering with those organizations. And the second I, or, uh, second I get access to them, let's be honest, how do you go to 700,000 villages? How do you reach them on your own when you're nobody? Uh, you need partners, right? So reaching them through those partners allows me to at least see, hear, and understand who these women are. My biggest learning is very straightforward. It's not like we're offering something that is so brand new. These women are eager to earn money. They have been working um, haphazardly. They're like married at the age of 14 and have like five kids and they're now 35. What they want is an opportunity to have an income that is consistent where they live. And then when you bring them technology, when you bring them training and capacity building and opportunities to run a beauty parlor or run a Gadana shop or run a, a, a assisted commerce store, they're going, I can do this where I live. I can do this for three hours. I can still earn 5,000 rupees every month consistently. I'm in. So it's not that hard. It's a matter of the design. And so we've been able to give women what they want. They have been able to give women what they want. 